Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury and the Paul Pluto channel. Quick, quick, quick whist, whist watch check. I'm wearing a Reverso Grand Date. Reverso Grand Date. Guys, today's topic is how to sell a watch to a wrist watch dealer and get the maximum price possible. How do you do this? And I've decided to put this video together because a lot of people out there seem to be absolutely fucking hopeless. I've got a few dealers who are friends of mine uh, who tell me stories and uh, I think this video could be helpful. So how do you go about selling a wristwatch to a dealer without selling it too cheap? That is a very, very good question. Okay, so how do you go about doing this? Okay, very, very um, good question. Okay, so firstly, what you need to do is do some fucking homework. Uh, for example, this particular wristwatch here, this is a Patek Philippe. Uh, nowhere on this watch does it say the model. In this case here, it's a Patek Philippe Calatrava. It's also, um, the reference number would be a 5196. Nowhere externally does it say this. Internally, on the case back, it actually does mention the reference number as well as the serial number, etc. But externally, it doesn't say. So the first thing you need to do if you really want to sell your watch is find out what the fuck it is. Uh, otherwise um, you're going a bit blind. The next thing you need to do, <laughs> you need to find out and with the, the pleasure of the interweb, find out what are other dealers, watch dealers, selling a similar type of watch for. So a fantastic way to do this is to go on to Google, type in the watch brand and model number. So I would type in Patek Philippe Calatrava 5196. See what they are selling for. A good, two good, really good websites are of course Chrono24 and eBay. Those are two really popular sites. If you type in the watch, uh, Patek Philly Calatrava 5196 and put the words for sale afterwards, you'll see them other pieces that are for sale. The next thing you need to do is you need to work out this watch you want to sell, does it have box papers? Does it have all the bits? Because, you know, it's really, if you want to maximize the price a dealer pays, it's no good saying, oh, look, I want to sell this watch. The papers are somewhere at home. Yeah, I got the box somewhere. And yeah, there's a spare strap for it. But I can't, if you can't find it, is going to not help your case. So get all this stuff together. Okie dokie, okie dokie. So, so what is the best way to sell this piece? Well, the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you've fixed any problems. Now, let me explain to you. If you were selling a used car, say you were trading in a used car for a new car, and you got a massive scratch on the side of the car. Well, um, I gotta tell you, the dealer, when he goes through to value your car, he's going to 
pull off money to fix that fault. He's going to say, oh, it needs this. And he's going to do it worst case. If you've got a watch which has a flaw, like say a really nasty scratch or it is not functioning, well, <laughs> somebody who's going to price it up, they're not going to say, oh, it just needs, it just needs this or just, no, they're going to exploit that flaw for everything that it's worth. So I got to be honest with you, often if the watch is not working, you need to make an informed decision is, is it worth repairing or do you leave it in not running state? So that's, that depends on the watch and, and, and the, uh, the desirability. The next thing you need to do is you need to realize some economic basics. Okay, most watch dealers there, this time, this video is being recorded in November 2019. The two big brands that are selling hot, well, there's a few big brands, is Rolex, especially Steel Sports, Patek Philippe, especially Steel Sports, Patek Philippe, and some Audemars Piguet Royal Oaks, certain models. Uh, besides that, there's a sprinkling of popular models. The Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon is a good, good watch uh, that is always in demand. But other Amigas are soft as shit. This particular Patek here, it's a dress watch. Which means it's not actually flavor of the month. Yes, somebody will always want a Patek. Yes, but it's... This would be a lot more valuable if this was a Nautilus or an Aquanaut. If my auntie had balls, she'd be my uncle. It is what it is. So I've got to be honest with you. You've got to realize this reality. Rolex and certain, a few other models and brands are wanted. If what you have is outside that, well, instead of selling it to a watch dealer you're probably best to put it on consignment with a watch dealer see the problem is this it's not so much that this is a bad patek it's just that the flavor of the month is steel sports watches this dress patek the dealer who buys it would probably have to keep it in stock for a while he may have it there for 6 to 12 months. He needs to factor in the cost of the money he's used to outlay for this watch. So, any watch that isn't in that inner circle is going to be something that he's going to say, well, it would ta possibly take 12 months to sell. The reality is, unless you have a hot watch, the dealer is really going to give you a price that factors in worst case sales situation. Sure, you could sell it to him and then this dealer sells it next week, but there's no guarantees. So you've got to be realistic. Now, let's take a look at this. I said before, you want to do a bit of research and see what they're selling for on Chrono24 eBay. Now, does that mean the dealer will pay you that? No, 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 no. That is a starting figure. For example, this particular watch here, if you look around, they are selling for around about 15,000 US dollars. Okay. Does that mean if I take this to a dealer, he'll give me 15 US? No, 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 no. That's what he would hope <coughs> to sell it for. So if you look at this particular watch here, if I went in to the dealer and said, okay, <coughs> this is a good example, it's all working, there's no flaws with it, blah, 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 box case scenario. The dealer would want to sell it for 15,000 US. How much would he give you? Well, let's assume that he wants this watch because the problem is it being a dress watch, 
he may say, well, I may be stuck with this 6 to 12 months. So 15000 what he'd try and sell it for. He then would say, okay, I would try and sell it for fifteen. I need to make a margin, let's say 15%. 15%. Then he would say, well, I also need to, uh, I may need to service it. So he'd put an arbitrary figure, a wholesale service, maybe $500. Then he says, well, if I'm going to pay cash for it, I need to discount it. I need to make myself a little bit of effort. So this sort of watch here, you'd find that he may sell it for 15. He may list it for 15, but he may actually sell it for 14. 14 minus a margin, holding costs, service costs. And that's what the sort of figure is. The reality is, you are not going to get top whack prices selling hard to move watches to a dealer. No. No, 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 no. Hard to move watches are always going to be fucking difficult. They're going to skin you alive. So. What is the answer there? You've got a number of factors. This business of buying and selling watches, you can try and list it privately with, with, with many problems. You've got to realize the cash today price that a dealer pays you is a very different figure to the 15000 you see this advertised on Chrono24. A lot of dealers, if they're selling it for fifteen, they they'd be offering you High eights, low nines. It's called margin and it's called free enterprise capitalism. This is a hard watch to move. Many watches the dealers don't even fucking want unless they are an absolute steal. Let me re-educate the audience. Breitling. Breitling. Very, very savage. I know a dealer who bought a Breitling from a punter less than a week after the customer bought it. The customer bought the watch, he got 15% off retail. How much did said dealer offer him for it? It was only, it was under a week old, less than half of retail. That's right, less than half. Another brand that's soft as shit is Panerai. Panerai dealers, unless unless they get it cheap, don't fucking want it. Now, does that mean they will also subsequently pass it on cheap? Not necessarily. What it means is they take a long-term, they're placing a bet. It's like being at a casino. They say, right, we'll buy this cheap. I may need to hold this for 12 months. I may, may need to service it. I may need to discount the price. Boom, 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 boom. That's how they work out their price. To be completely frank and honest with you, the only watches you can feasibly sell to a dealer and hope to get a reasonably fair price are hot watches. Hot models. If your watch is not a hot model, you will be skinned. There is a select few hot models. Rolex is a good start. However, Forget Cellini, forget Cellini, Rolex Steel Sports, Rolex Two-Tone Sports, they're pretty good, uh, they are pretty, pretty good. Pam, stay the fuck away, Pam, even the desired models like the base, the entry level PAMs, the dealers don't really want them unless they are cheap. The honest answer is if you're in the watch space there, you're only going to get really good dollars for hot models. And it's basically the dealer can sell it quickly. It's a cost, sell price, 
minus margin, minus holding costs, minus fuck around. So where a, hypothetically, let's say a Pepsi, a brand new Pepsi, would retail for 10,000, <clears> the <throat> dealers would be paying low 20s and they would be trying to sell for mid to high 20s. They would pay the customer just under 20. So there is there is an able there is an ability to sell things to a dealer for good money. However, however, it's got to be hot models. If the model is a soft genre, dress watches at the moment <coughs> very very hard to sell. Dealer who buys this, he wants he wants he wants this here. He may sell it for 15 US. Well, guess what? He ain't going to pay you 15, is he? He ain't going to pay you 14. He's going to try and make a margin, a holding cost, a service cost, fuck around cost. That's the reality. So you've got to know this. If you know these numbers, you can see that you go into a position of power. The worst thing is, is what dealers hate is you go in, how much will you give me for this watch? Now, what a dealer wants you to do is he wants you to name a price. Why does he want you to do that? Because some people have no idea what they're doing. And, uh, for example, this watch here, he may want to sell it for 15. He'll probably pay 10 or 11 for it. You might go in and say, oh, five and a half, six thousand. Deal done. He's bought it cheaper than he's prepared to pay. Dealers will not normally name prices. I always, when I've gone to dealers, I always throw it back. You guys are the experts. You're the experts. What's the most you'll pay? And that's the honest truth. That is the honest truth. You, you really want to see what they will pay. You don't want them to think what will you foolishly take dealers first words what do you want what sort of money you're chasing I think it's better to uh, to sort of say if, if they do ask you that I've always been a bit of a smart ass I just go there so what you're the expert but probably the best thing to say is well look this is a paddock Calatrava it's a uh, 5196. They're going on chrono for about 15,000 US dollars. Box papers. Mine is box papers. Mine is in nice condition. I understand you may need to make a little bit of a margin. Uh, but uh, what do you think is fair? Retailing? What do you hope to sell it? I would throw it back to the dealer. What do you hope to sell it for? 15 US. What would you try and sell it for? That's what they listed for. The cheapest one on chrono 24 is blah, 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 blah. But that's from Russia, so we cancel out the Russian. We say, well, let's look at a legitimate American dealer. What's the cheapest one of these going for a legitimate? That's how I would start the conversation. Say, look, this is a da-da-da-da-da. I have box papers, service history, da 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 This is what it, it's selling for. Dealers are selling them for. I understand that's the selling price. I'm not asking for that. I understand you need to make some money. <clears throat> What do you think is fair? That's how I would answer that question. Now, the honest, the honest truth is, if you are a lazy fucker, you're not going to get as much as if you do the work. The best way to get the maximum fucking price for any whisk watch is to find the retail customer yourself. You find the retail customer and you can give a low retail price to them they're not paying high retail. You got that's the maximum dollar. Now it's going to be a lot better than wholesale. Going to get a lot more. So if you can find that retail punter, you are really streets and streets ahead of the average bear. And that is the way you've got to realize this. If you rely on a dealer. You're going to pay a premium for him to do that. It's like having a used car. If you take it to a dealer and say, I want to sell this car, well, he's going to factor in all the expenses to sell it. Whereas if you find the retail customer, 
you will get much more money than if you sold to a wholesale source. This is the reality. It's no different whether it's diamonds, wristwatches, or automobiles. If you can find that retail punter, you will do a fuckload better. As long as you know the margins, you know the market, you know what you're doing. You need to know what is the price of these. What are they retail for? What are they selling secondhand for? You need to know your condition. Well, that one in in America, that's that's 13 and a half. There's no box and papers. It's got an aftermarket strap and the buckle isn't even a paddock buckle. You've got to know how to you got to do your research. The buckle alone is over a thousand dollars. The strap can be five, six hundred bucks. These things make a huge difference. So you've got to do your homework and you've got to have the knowledge. If you are lazy, lazy, and let the dealer do all the research, he's going to charge massive premium and he's going to pay you worst case scenario. So the honest advice is you can only really get good prices for watches if they're hot models that are highly sought after. Softer models or softer brands, you're really better off to either consign it to the dealer after you've done your research or sell the fucking thing yourself. I'm Paul Pluter. This has been a video on how to sell your wristwatch to a watch dealer and get maximum price. Tell me what you think. Like, subscribe. Tell your fuckhead friends. And don't be afraid to put some nasty comments down below. Oh. Hey Archie Luxury fans, if you're into luxury, then you gotta be into 66 Buick Rivieras. Check out my son and I, Alex, as we restore this beautiful 66 Buick. Neighbors are having a picnic, you know, having fun and stuff. Me, I'm doing cars. It's what I've done my whole life. David SW. David SW. David SW. Who does Archie Luxury recommend is the greatest gray market dealer in America? There's only one choice, David SW. That's right, guys. I've got to tell you the honest truth. I have, for a long time, been looking for the perfect answer. Who do I recommend people go to see? Who do I recommend that people can go and uh, buy watches? And I've got to be honest with you. The greatest, the greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, Paddock Philippe, Audemars Piguet, is David SW. David SW. David SW. David SW.com. That's right, guys. I have been looking for a contact who I can very nicely refer people to. I am not in the selling business. Customer service. I'm too old to sell watches. I'm too old. I like to recommend my viewers to a reliable source. In Australia, I've got some great sources. There's uh, Sydney Watch Exchange with Cove, Rani at Vintage Watch Co, Shani, Shani at European Watch Gallery. And in America, who is the best source for pre-owned Rolex? For all the hot models? There's only one person I would recommend, David SW. David SW, David SW. That is the premier source for pre-owned Rolex. I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. Guys, if you are looking for a hot Rolex model, there is only one place you can go to. David SW, David SW, David SW. Let's be honest, guys. There's no point schmoozing schmoozing, schmoozing the dealers, the ADs, they're just a waste of time. Unless you're going to buy 20 pieces, you are wasting your time. 
what you're better off to do is pay the market premium and go to a good, good pre-owned dealer. Who do I recommend? David SW. David SW. David SW. That's correct, guys. I want to tell you this now. I 100% stand behind David SW. David SW, the greatest pre-owned dealer in the entire United States of America. That's right. The greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, for Patek Philippe, for Audemars Piguet, David SW. He even does things like FP Jean. David SW, David SW, David SW. That's right. If you want to buy a pre-owned Rolex, a Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, there's only one good source I would recommend. David SW, David SW, David SW. I'm Paul Pluter, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, and I'm proud to recommend David SW. See you later. Thank you for watching this channel.